So one of the things I want to talk about, and I want to go into detail on it, is Metcalfe's law, but more importantly, Zipif's law. You will hear me talk about this a lot on this channel, and that is talking about leading indicators, not lagging indicators. Remember, a lagging indicator is useful if you want to look at the rear view mirror of your car and see what's behind you and what happened. But a leading indicator is looking out the front window to see where the car is going. Now, from a longer term perspective, using Metcalfe's law principles and actually Zipov's law, which I'm going to talk about in this video, is going to give you a much better understanding. Like Einstein said, it's not how much you know that matters, it's how much you under stand and that's what I want to do in this video as a precursor to the up and coming video because if you don't have a good understanding in this video the next video is going to be pointless but if you if you watch this through and you understand what's going on then when it comes to actually being able to do this yourself and check different cryptos to see whether you, you feel they're under or overvalued this is going to be a really useful tool to have on your tool belt so let's get into it. Okay, so one of the first things that you need to understand with Metcalfe's law is the actual principle. So Robert Metcalfe is the guy who actually invented the ethernet. And he came to the conclusion that, you know, the, the value of a network really comes down to the number of users in that network. Now, one of the best examples, hang on. One of the best examples that he gave of this was the fax machine. So if you have one fax machine in existence, it would have cost a lot of money to make that one fax machine and the value of it's pretty much worthless because you have no one who you can send and receive faxes to. But now, if you have a lot of other fax machines, then all of a sudden these fax machines can communicate with one another. In other words, users can now communicate with one another. So he said that the value of, the, of any given network is going to be proportional to the number of users in that network squared. Now, this actually makes a lot of sense because what we're saying is the bigger the network is, the more people that you can reach. So when applying Metcalfe's law, Zipper's law, Cernoff's law, any of these laws, you want to apply to cryptocurrencies that already have a fairly big network and data size. It's kind of pointless applying this to brand new cryptocurrencies or cryptocurrencies that don't have much adoption. So one of the things we have to actually think about is, is it really true though? you know, the number of users in a network squared, is that really the value that the network increases by? Because you're not going to communicate or really have the bandwidth to be in touch with everyone and extract the value from the whole network. So how can Metcalfe's law be true? <sighs> and so this is what brings us to Cernoff's law, because what we're now talking about is actually looking at the logarithm rather than saying let's look at the number of users squared. Let's just look at the logarithm um, of the number of users. So it's actually, the, the formula is actually to multiply the number of users by itself, but do it by the log of the users itself. Now, what, what does logarithm actually mean and why should you care? I think instead of using fax machines as an example, let's think about email. You don't email everybody in your email address list on your email account. Let's say you use Gmail. You don't email everyone, you might have let's say a thousand email addresses on there, but you email probably three to four, maybe up to 50 of those max. So taking that into consideration, we need to think about logarithm. Now, when you look at a chart and you look at the logarithm of a chart, just switch any chart to logarithm mode. So if you're looking at stock charts or crypto charts, etc., just switch it to uh, logarithm mode. And when you do that, then what you'll see is that the price is nearer to the price where you're at right now are more condensed and then as the prices go up on the chart they get wider so they become more relevant the closer they are to the current price you can think of it a bit, little bit like that so the number of emails that you are using are more relevant the ones that are nearer to you so th there's going to be a proportional ratio of the amount of emails that you use in your email account that are actually useful to you and so that's what we're doing here with taking the logarithm of the number of users squared and i'm going to show you the maths in this in one of the up and coming videos, but I want you to understand the concept of why Zipper's law is different to Metcalfe's law, why it's a little bit more conservative, because it's actually saying that the number of users in this given network are not as useful as what Metcalfe's law is saying. So it's taking out a little bit more of the fluff and getting down to what's actually 
a little bit more real here when valuing an entire network. One of the most useful things we can do now is actually jump on screen and actually see what does this look like? So when we go and apply one of these laws, what does it actually look like? One of the best things to do when comparing this to price is to look at the 30 day moving average of the price. So you take the price over the last 30 days, look at the average and then trail that back. That smooths out all the noise of the humps and bumps of price movement. And you do the same with Zipov's law or Metcalf's law. So when you're looking at the trends, you're really looking at the general trend. This is not a short term indicator. This is something to say, hey, over the last two, three, four, six months, this thing's been going out of whack. And guess what? That's exactly what we've been seeing happening with the Bitcoin price. So just to recap, the number of users in a network squared is generally the value that you could attribute to the network. Now, it's not just the one value because when we're calculating Metcalfe's law, we're not calculating price information. It's the same with Zipper's law. We're, we're not using price information to calculate that yet. What we're using are the number of addresses registered because this gives us the idea of the number of users. You can also use the number of transactions, but I found the correlation is higher and more accurate for logical reasons when you look at the number of addresses because that's going to be much more accurate as to how many users are actually using that network. When we take Zipov's law, we're actually taking a toned down version of Metcalfe's law. We're not being as aggressive in our assumptions. We're being, we're playing it a little bit more safe. And you know, someone like myself who comes from a finance background is naturally going to gravitate more towards using that methodology. Anyhow, when I've looked at this, it's very clear. And if you've watched the recent videos, you'll see that I really believe Bitcoin's price is undervalued right now. You know, the number of users trending is going up. Remember Metcalfe's law or Zipov's law is more of a growth calculation, growth or shrink. It's more of a growth or shrink calculation than an absolute, this is what the value and the dollar value of the network should be today. For me, it doesn't really work that way. It's more the change in the trend. Now, one of the things we also need to talk about is correlation because you need to understand when you're looking at data, how well correlated is it? And there's actually a mathematical formula. In fact, there's a number of them. We're going to use Pearson's correlation coefficient to actually talk about how well correlated the data is so you know that you can rely on it. Anyhow, give this a thumbs up if you found the video useful. Until the next one, take care and cheers. Alexa, what's the time?